Hello, Cricketers. Welcome to Cricketing with Delanda. It's me again, <laughs> Delanda. And in today's tutorial, I will be showing you one of the ways that I make photo clocks. So there are two ways. This is a this is part one of a two-part video series. I'm going to show you the way that I make them in Cricut Design Space today. And then in the next tutorial, the follow-up, the part two of this, I'll be showing you how to do um, how to make photo clocks in Microsoft Word. Now, just depending on you know your taste and what you want to do with your clock and the features and the functionalities you want um, and the, the freedom to create. Um, you can decide which way works best for you, but I will show you both ways. So in today's tutorial though, I will be showing you how to do it from Cricut Design Space. So in order to do this project, you will need a clock. And I purchased this one at Walmart. I actually purchased three or four of them. Um, they come in multiple colors. Um, I bought a black one, I bought a, black, a white one, and I also bought a red one. But I know that it comes in a, a goldish tone and a silver tone. Um, and I'm probably going to do something with this one for my stepdad or, e or either for my husband. I haven't decided just yet. Um, but the clock that I made today, the two clocks that I made today, um, one I made in Cricut Design Space, as I said, and the other I made in Microsoft Word. This one I made in Microsoft Word, and this is a picture from uh, my wedding day, which is one of the best days of my life. And I just put that uh, timeless love. So I created this one in Microsoft Word. And it, like I said, that'll be part two. This one is Cricut Crafting Time. And that's me with my hammer. Because sometimes when you're, cri you're crafting with your Cricut, it is hammer time, okay? So um, I'll show you my process for doing this one. And I created this one in Cricut Design Space. So um, in order to do this, you will need um, printable vinyl. I use the Paper Studio brand. Um, like I said, you'll need a clock. You will also need a, a small Phillips screwdriver in order to take the clock apart. Um, it's very simple to take it apart. You don't need you don't need anything else to take this clock apart. Just the small Phillips screwdriver will do the trick. Um, and you need some patience. You'll need um, you won't need to measure the uh, dimensions of the clock because all of that is provided in the video um, but if you do need to measure i always use my clear um, cricut ruler so if you want to just be sure and change your dimensions up a little bit you can do that um, and for this clock i did end up using um permanent vinyl i added that to the clock at the end because um, my daughter said mm, you need some numbers on there so I, I added some numbers with permanent vinyl okay Without further ado, let's head on over to Cricut Design Space. Okay, I am in Cricut Design Space and I am using the updated version, which is the 6.9, which has the kerned fonts. And I'm excited <laughs> about that because I like the way it looks. I have noticed that the some of the fonts that used to be bold, um, I didn't really see that option, but I haven't played with it enough. Um, but we'll get into that at a later time. All right, so the first way that I'm gonna show you how to make a photo clock is um, by going to images and um, by searching for a clock template. So just type in clock. And normally when I'm searching for images, because I am not a um, Cricut Access member, I try to find images that are free if I can't find anything that's free that I like, then I keep searching. So if you go over here to ownership, you have options. You have um, clocks that you, or you know images you've uploaded, images you've purchased, free and downloaded. So if I'm looking for something in Cricut Design Space that is free, I'll choose the free option and see what they have available. The one that I chose for tonight is this one. And I like it because it's just a plain clock and I know that I can do what I want to do with it. I can tell that it is a layered design because if I look over here in my layers panel, I can see that it has multiple pieces if I wanted to ungroup them and take it apart. The size of the clocks that I'm using, um, the inside um, design of the clock, 
The clock face itself is 7.75 by 7.75 because it is a circle. So I will change my um, sizing to 7.75 by. And now with this one, I did have to unlock it to get that. Um, for some reason, it wasn't already a perfect circle. So now I have the size that I want. This will be the inside design of the clock. Um, what I also know that I want to do is put this clock in my what's going to be my crafting room. So if you are with me on Facebook, you already know that I don't have a crafting room, that I'm in my game room because my son is home from college and I had to move all my stuff out here. What I also know is that the, I want the color of this clock, um, all of these pieces, to be blue, okay? And I'm gonna cut this on cardstock. I'm not going to use um, vinyl, all right? So the next thing that I know that I want to do is I want to upload a picture because when I think of you know crafting, I call it, it's hammer time, right? So this is the picture I have with my hammer when I'm thinking about the, some of the frustrating things about owning a Cricut, okay? So what I'll do is just resize it. I'm gonna bring the size of my canvas down so you can see it, okay? And then I'm also going to get a shape, a circle shape. And if you have followed any of my tutorials, you know that I love that slice option. Um, I use that in my keychains. I used it in Spotify. I use it, I use it quite often actually um, to slice out um, images to the to the shape that I want them to be. Okay, I am going to make this a little bit bigger because I want some of that I want some of that Cricut machine in there too. So I'm going to select both of these and I'm going to slice it. A piece of my elbow is cut off, but that's okay. All right, and I don't need this and I don't need this anymore. I know that I want this to fit right in here, right in the middle. So let me move this over, move this over. I am going to send, let me um, align it and center it. And I also want to send the picture to the back so that I can see the clock face in the front. And I wanna add some text to it, okay? So I want this to say is hammer time. Okay, so my text is going to say is hammer time. Oh, my caps lock is on. I'm gonna, I want it to say is craft, is cricket. Crafting time. And um, I'm okay with that font. I know that I want the font to be the same color as um, the clock face and I want this to be centered. And um, I think it'll be, I probably, I think I want this. I think I want this to be white. And I think that I should add this to my photo since it's already, this is already print and cut. So if I flatten that, that's better. And now I can add this and let me center it all. And I want to send the photo to the back. <clears throat> Okay, and that is exactly how I want it. So I know that I'm doing two different things. One is I'm gonna cut out the clock template, and the other thing that I'll need to do is send this photo to my printer and um, print it, and then I'll need to make sure that I um, align it properly. Let me see what will happen if I click Attach. Okay, and let's see. And let me try to click make it. 
Hey now, hey, I like this. Okay, so I am going to click continue. And the first thing I need to do is send it to my printer. And I am using the Paper Studio printable vinyl from Hobby Lobby that I purchased for $5.99. Okay, I am sending my photo to the printer. If you are using the Paper Studio brand and you are wondering how come sometimes it gets stuck in the printer, what I have found with Paper Studio and even Cricut brand printable vinyl is that when you put it in the, your printer feed, like the, the, the feed tray to you know accept the paper, put the paper all the way at the end of the feeder so that it's almost like it's gonna fall out of the tray. Um, and, let, and it'll make the machine work harder to find it and grab it. So that's my little trick. I do keep the bleed option on. And you see I'm using a Canon MX470. It is not sublimation. It is not inkjet. This is a regular desk jet printer that I purchased, you know, a few years ago during um, Black Friday. I may have paid $50 for it. And that is including tax and gratuities <laughs> so I, I did not pay a lot of money for this printer at all and then the paper should go in face down okay so the next thing that I'll do is select um, cardstock I selected medium cardstock um, and I'm using a blue piece I did select the more option and I am going to I have my my mat loaded and I'm going to stick it in the Cricut Maker. Okay, so I would say put the glass aside for right now, and you can use the box to hold all of the materials so you don't lose them. Um, the next thing you'll need to do is take the hands off the clock and just remember the order that they were in. So think of it as going from least to greatest or smallest to largest because the second hand is what's on top. And so if you just pull it straight up, um, they, they just pop right out. And then next is the minute hand. So I'm just pulling straight up. And then last is the our hand so now I have what looks like this now you can take this out this is just card stock that's printed and it is glued down very well trust me um, I know because in the first clock I took this out and it I, it requires some digging so I think for this one I'm definitely going to leave it in I have both of my designs here I have the clock template is still on my mat and I also have the the photo and it's still on my mat also and for some reason I thought I flattened the letters but and, and I thought that I put it here but I don't know if you can see them but they actually printed here and so I'm going to see if I can either figure out how to put them here or just forget about them for right now um, just for sake of time okay so I know that my clock template is bigger than my, than my actual photo. So what I'll need to do is take this part off because this, this can go on my, on my clock first. Okay. This doesn't look bad at all. This actually, so, if I were to continue, I can still see the numbers even though I don't have the numbers in my actual template. Um, and what I'll do is use a glue stick to um, put this on here. You can use a glue stick, you can use a glue gun, you can use um, the little pieces of adhesive. There are multiple options for putting this on. I think I'm gonna use a glue stick, but I'll do this in a time lapse because it might take some time to put this all together, but you'll still see me doing it in the process. Okay, I decided to use a glue gun because I didn't have much glue left in my glue stick. So I will do all of this gluing um, in a time lapse. And I also, even though 
you won't really be able to see this. I'm still going to use this inner piece because I don't want these numbers to be showing. I don't, I don't care for the look of the numbers. So here I go. Okay, so you saw me put the clock together um, with the image that I chose of myself. <laughs> and of course, I refer to this one as hammer time because sometimes when I'm crafting, I need the hammer, okay? Um, we almost needed the hammer in my crafting group the other night when we were doing subway art because we were having issues and drama. Okay, so Angel and, and Natalie and Brenda and Queen Valencia and uh, Jazzy Jazz, we stuck in there, we, we, we did it. And um, uh, Sandra was in there with us and we laughed. And Miss Victoria, she was in there with us. We laughed and we had a good time. Um, but we, we, you know, I had to have a little, little beverage. It was fruit punch, they don't believe me, but it was. Um, we had a good time though. And you know, we at one point we did feel like we needed the hammer, so. <laughs> This clock will be appropriate for my uh, crafting area because sometimes I need that hammer. So I'm going to find a way to put that on here. I might have to put it on the outside of my. I love the way this. I love the way this. Came, <laughs> I love the way this came out. <laughs> so the next thing I'll need to do is put my. Um, Put the battery in so you can see that it actually works. You'll need a double A battery for this um, if you're going to be making one. Uh, one thing I have noticed about these clocks is that they are kind of loud, so you definitely won't mistake, you know, whether or not it's working because they're kind of loud. Um, I wouldn't have this in my bedroom because I'd have to use the hammer on the clock and I don't want to have to do that. All right, so the next thing I'll have to do is set the clock um, and it is pretty late where I am. So I won't even set it for the right time. I'll set it for 3.30. Okay, so this is my finished product. I'm definitely going to add it's Cricut crafting time on the outside of the glass, probably in um, permanent vinyl um, because when it's Cricut crafting time, I do need my hammer. Um, so this is part one of the video, making a photo clock in Cricut Design Space. There is definitely another way to make a photo clock, and that is in Microsoft Word. That will be part two of this series of making a photo clock. So hopefully you were able to follow my process. If you have any questions, please leave them down in the comment section. Um, and tell me what, what you think of this process, or if you know of a better process, or if you plan on trying it yourself. Um, at any rate, um, let me do my finishing video and close out with my final thoughts. Okay, so in the video, I didn't show you how I added the 12, three, six, and nine, but I, after I finished putting the clock together, I realized that it did look kind of plain and I went back and I just typed out 12, three, six, and nine, and I used permanent vinyl and I took the clock apart and I just um, burnish them onto the photo paper. I was worried about the photo paper sticking to the transfer tape, but it didn't, so it was fine. Um, I also didn't say earlier that you will need a AA battery for this for this clock, so make sure you get a AA battery in addition to all, the, all of the other materials that I listed. Um, if you haven't already, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button, turn on the bell for notifications because I upload new content every single week. Um, I do have a small Cricut Crafting group on Facebook. It is called Cricut Crafting with Delanda, and it is for beginners. It's for, because guess what? I'm still a beginner myself, um, and it is a safe space. We don't do sales, we don't do dumps. We help, we encourage, we teach, we share. Um, it is a very loving group. Um, there's nothing more I can say about it. We interact with each other. They are in the process right now of finishing up the Cricut Crafting Challenge number three. And <laughs> they have some amazing projects that are going on right now with layering heat transfer vinyl. So I am always amazed at how crafty they are. I always say you guys are a crafty bunch. 
Um, so in part two of the video, I'll show you my process for doing this one in Microsoft Word. Um, if you have any thoughts or comments, please share them down in the comment section and I will definitely respond to you. I appreciate you stopping by to visit my page. Hopefully this process works for you. If you have questions, I will answer you. Um, other than that, I'm so glad you stopped by and thanks for watching. Bye.